So let's go to code blocks now and let's create a simple malware type application in this particular program. So what we want to do is create a new file and let's save this file firstly and let's call this Snowcraft. It will create it with a dot C extension. So let's go to the appropriate directory and save the file accordingly. We had a directory created called tools and Snowcraft. Let's create it within this directory and we'll call it Snowcraft and it will save it with the extension dot C. Once that's done, we can then create our first bit of code. We need to include the libraries, the stdio.h and the stdlib.h as well. So to do that, we need to use the include statement. With this, it will allow us additional libraries, etc. So let's do that by typing in include and then the first one is stdio so I use the hash include stdio.sh in the less than and greater than brackets and let's also include stdlib.h as well and now that we have those two files we now just need to write a very simple piece of code int main and within main we want to have the following which will be in these brackets and what we want to do is basically load up the netcat file which we have called chest.exe and we then also want to load snowcraft dot exe straight after that. So to do that we type in system and with system we need to start and we want to start chest dot exe. So within these brackets we type in start. We had simply renamed the endcat file to chest dot exe so we simply type in start in these quotation marks and we need to find the directory path. So start slash b dir, the two slashes, then chest.exe. Dir was the directory we had created earlier. I'll explain these additional tags, the minus d, minus l, minus p. We want to run it in daemon mode, listen mode, and basically to listen to on a specific port. So this is the directory we created earlier. We call ncat chest.exe. So basically we're asking this particular program to load up the chest.exe file, daemon and listen, and we'll put port 4444 to have this particular port that the ncat utility will be listening on. Minus E, and we want to run it with the cmd.exe file. Very simple, start slash b, the directory path slash slash chest.exe, minus d, minus l, minus p. And now we also want to put in system, which then loads up the snowcraft.exe file. We type in dir slash slash snowcraft.exe. So basically this program will run. Once someone clicks the executable file that we will just build in a short while, it will load up chess.exe in the background and also load up snowcraft.exe so the user does not see anything different. All they see is the snowcraft file, but we know it has opened up the additional NCAT utility in the background. So in this manner, a hacker would create a little program that basically loads up a game and before loading the game, loads a netcat utility that then allows the port to be listened on and the hacker could retrieve data accordingly knowing what ports are open what data is being transmitted etc so this is how a hacker would basically deceive the user the game opens up as normal 
but the chest.exe file opens up in the background and the user does not even know it. So we've saved the file. Now you see that it is a CPP file. Let's compile this and let's look at whether there are any errors. So compile. Let's go to the build log to see what that looks like. And everything looks fine. Now we want to run that to see how it actually works. So I can simply click the play button here and you'll see the netcat utility opens up in the background and the snowcraft game opens up in the foreground. With some commands we can actually hide the netcat utility. So let's just close this for now and show you how the netcat utility actually works. So if I click the snowcraft file here you'll see it open up the netcat utility in the background and the game in the foreground. Now let's look at what happens if we go to a command prompt to see if that actually is running. So once the program is running, we go to task manager and have a look here. You'll see a file called chest.exe that is running. Let's make sure that it is working on the actual port. To do that, we can go to the command prompt to see exactly how that works. Remember, we renamed the netcat utility to chest.exe to make it less known, less visible to the average user. Now, let's go in further and open up a command prompt. And in command prompt, I use the netstat command. And netstat dash slash na. Hang on a second, let me just remember this command. Netstat slash nat. Is it nat? No, it's a dash na slash na dash na nets that dash na will show us that the all the programs that are running here you'll see there's a TCP on port four 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 which is our chest.exe file. To investigate that further, we can go in and do further analysis to find out exactly what the program is. So to do that, we can go to something called task list. Task list is like a program manager, but from the command prompt. If I type in task list, and let's have a look at the programs that are running. Let's go through and look here. You will see the chess.exe program running on process ID 936. This number we can look at in more detail now because now we want to know what exactly is this program doing. So I can do netstat minus NAO and you will see here on port a uh, process ID 936 we have chest.exe running and you'll see it has TCP on port 4444. So in this way, we know chest.exe is running and listening on port 4444, which is the netcat utility that we had secretly included when the user ran the snowcraft.exe file. You want to make sure to use a port that is not really commonly used so that there are no problems with the program actually running. We've picked 4444 here to make sure that... Uh, it is not a port that is normally used. I'm just closing some of these programs now. What we want to do is just get rid of some of the files that we are not needing. So let me close these manually. What I need to do now is just move the Snowcraft C++ file and the Snowcraft O.O file. I need to move this and move them to another directory away from this particular directory because I want to zip the file and that's the file we'll be using to infect a vulnerable machine. So let's go back to that folder and you see the Snowcraft file here. The next step would be to rename this file to something like Snow Game. Doesn't really matter, just rename it to whatever you want. And now it still works, you can see that it's still loading up. And that kept utility in the background, this game in the foreground. Let's close all these applications again. So we don't need all that running. And 
what you then want to do is work out how to zip this file. We'll use 7-zip or WinZip, etc. You could use any utility to zip the files. And we will then include that on the vulnerable machine and show you exactly how a machine can be infected.